this is a great day. I think I've only had three other days like this in my life, and I've not shared any of them with my son. We are going to a community about 20 miles east of where I live to rescue an animal. I think it is a good animal. It is in a flower bed. It's been sitting in this flower bed, quietly rusting away for 20 years. And we're going to go pull that thing out, take it to the shop, and clean it up. This doesn't happen very often, and we'll talk more about how difficult and unlikely it is to find an anvil in a condition like this. I can't wait to see what this thing is, consists of, who made it, and what kind of shape it's really in. This is so neat. That anvil has been sitting there for 20 years, at least. It survived the anvil genocide of World War II. From here, it looks like it could be a hay button. Hard to tell, but it's kind of a characteristic appearance. We won't know till we clean it up. Let's see what we've got. This is awesome. I, I may have been hasty in uh, identifying this as hay button as it was sitting in the flower bed, because I love hay button. I mean, you know that, right? It looks like this may be a Trenton. You can see a little bit of a diamond shape insignia on here. That's Trenton. Trenton was a US manufacturer, well regarded. It's not hay button, but it's a good anvil. You can see this has got a, a hard steel face, a carbon steel face on the top. It's got some corners broken off, but that still, it doesn't hurt us at all. I'll take the grinder and ease that so it'll make a nice fullering edge. Rust, paint, so what? An anvil is remarkably entropy proof, okay? This could rust for 500 years and still be usable as an anvil. Paint will come off with heat, with a wire brush. This will go back to a, a fully functional, uh, really beautiful condition with just a little work. This is an interesting thing. You see how that horn has been blunted, intentionally upset? That's because when these things came from the, from the um, forge, this came to a really sharp point. And it would wreck your day to walk by a new anvil and stab your thigh onto the end of a sharp pointed horn. It would penetrate. It would wreck you. So one of the first things that would happen is a smith would blunt the end of that horn to save himself or an apprentice from a wound. The weld. The weld. Trenton and we'll know more when we, when we uh, get this back to the shop. Trenton often would weld the sweeps to the body, arc weld, V it back in and arc weld to reduce forging process. It looks like we have a bulge here that would indicate an arc weld at the waist. We'll see if we can figure that out when we get back to the forge. You can clearly see the line of the carbon face on there. Looks like the grain of the face was a little coarse. This is going to be a great addition to my shop. I can't wait to get it cleaned up and show the world what kind of a score we got out of the flower bed this morning. Okay, go ahead. Nice size anvil. You'll make a lot of trips on anvil rescues before you'll find one as classically situated and really as uh, worthwhile as this one. But they do exist. So I don't want you to be discouraged when you hear me talk about the fact that I've only had this happen a few times in my life. This can happen for you. The likelihood is that there is an anvil like this, or perhaps better, within really just a few miles of where you are right now. But it's up to you to do the legwork, to have the conversations, to place the ads in the newspapers, to do whatever you have to do to find it, to uncover it. Keep looking. You're going to find one, and it is going to be something that will add dimension to your life, that will inspire other people to keep looking. These anvils are worth finding, and they're worth saving. Now, I am no expert on this, but I've either been involved with or been an eyewitness to maybe 18 or 20 anvil finds 
Anvil transactions, and I, I've seen some trends emerge. There seem to be about four ways that you can increase your likelihood of finding an anvil. The first, and arguably the most interesting, is to begin to include the word anvil in every conversation. If you do that faithfully for three or four months, you're going to find an anvil. Everybody is going to know somebody who knows something about an anvil. And it will be a higher likelihood of finding one at a nice price. Now the next way, and actually the way that I found this anvil, is by placing an ad in a nickel shopper paper. My ad was very simple. Anvils wanted, top dollar paid. I think I found three anvils before I let the ad lapse because I didn't feel like buying any more anvils at the time. The first two were, you know, kind of low-end, light. One was a Swedish cast anvil. And one of them was this one. It took five years to close the deal, but it was a productive approach. Now, the 21st century version of that, as almost all of you know, is Craigslist. What a phenomena that is. But if you're going to have any success on Craigslist, you've got to babysit and babysit and refresh and watch and broaden your search and be very proactive. First guy there is going to nail it. Look at this. I missed this deal because I was in Arizona at the time. But this bargain went at about 150 miles from where I live. I would have jumped on that like a duck on a June bug, but hey, you don't win every one. The moral is, watch Craigslist and be the first to respond. Now, if you're one of those who will only be satisfied with a particular anvil in a particular condition, you need it right now and you don't care too much how much you have to spend, then eBay is your route. There will always be something just spectacular for sale on eBay, though there may never be anything as spectacular as this one again. 660 pound hay button, almost pristine condition. It went for more than $14,000, but somebody got what they wanted right now. So, figure out what you want. Get after it. Include it in your conversation. Be diligent in your shopping. Place an ad. You're going to find one.
the paint came right off. You may have been alarmed to see me grinding this edge. Don't be. The off edge of the anvil is often used for fullering. In fact, drawing out is always done on the off edge of the anvil, essentially. And a fullered edge like that is handy. I'm probably going to build this up, that little segment right there. Perhaps a couple of those little spots, just so it's uniform and looks good. This is an antique anvil made by Trenton. That's a U.S. manufacturer. At 155 pounds, it's a nice size. It's big enough to use a good sized hammer and do some work. This was made by men who were not afraid to work and knew how. It's got a hard face on the top. It's sound. Sometimes a hardened face will crack or delaminate, especially on a Peter Wright. But listen. Good. Beautiful. 